California is among 11 states that extended their open enrollment deadlines to sign up for Obamacare. This special enrollment period might increase confusion following the recent repeal of the individual mandate under the new tax reform law. Here to help us sort out uh, health care options is Harry Nelson, founder and managing partner of Nelson Hardeman, a law firm for health care providers. Uh, he's also co-author of the book From Obamacare to Trump Care, Why You Should Care. Welcome back, sir. Good morning. Good to see you. Great to be with uh, you guys. So who is impacted in California by the repeal of the individual mandate? Who is not impacted? Why? So there are uh, roughly 39 million Californians. About 4 million of them either get coverage through the Covered California Insurance Exchange or, uh, or don't have insurance. Uh, they're just uninsured. That's about 11% that's about of the state. About half the state, not quite, 46% get insurance through their work. Mm -hmm. uh, about, about a third of the state get insurance through the Medi-Cal program, uh, which is income-based. And about 10, 11% get it through Medicare. So, um, so about 80% of Californians aren't really affected by the repeal. They, they, their care is either work-based or these government programs. It's really that group in the middle who are earning too much to qualify for Medi-Cal, but aren't getting uh, uh, insurance. Okay, so for the folks that don't have insurance right now, Medicare, you said, is an option? So Medicare is an option if you're over 65 or if you have, if you have a Social Security level of disability like, uh, uh, that, mm -hmm. that qualifies you, or if you have uh, uh, kidney end-stage renal disease. So, so Medicare is very limited. Uh, Medi-Cal is, is an option for many more people, that, and, and many of the, of the 4 million, of the, let's say, 2.9 million Californians who don't have any insurance, some of them are unaware that they qualify for Medi-Cal. Okay. And, and so when we talk about the individual mandate, that's the thing that says you have to buy insurance. Right. That's been repealed. So can you still get insurance through the California exchange. Yeah, so basically what the tax law that passed in December did was it eliminated the mandate. It said you're, you're no longer required. There's no longer a penalty on your tax form if you don't buy insurance. That was the case. That's been the law for the last seven years. So many people who are on Covered California, which is what we call the exchange here, are staying on, right? There are a lot of people who generally it's a population of people who either their job doesn't provide insurance or they're just out of work and don't have the resources to, uh, to buy, or they're, they're younger people, 20s, 30s, 40s, who are feeling like they don't need it. So they still have the option. The question is really how, the, uh, how this repeal, the fact that some people don't need to do it, is going to affect pricing. Well, doesn't it right. change the pool? Essentially? Well, yeah, so what everyone's afraid of, uh, the people, sorry, everyone who thinks that the exchanges were a good thing uh, is afraid that the healthier people will opt out completely, either go for catastrophic only policies, and basically you'll be left with a sicker population and higher rates okay. yeah, and higher premiums. Well, those people that we <clears throat> mentioned that aren't that concerned about health insurance, but they want to somehow take advantage of the mandate repeal. So we don't yet have catastrophic only policies in California. The o Obamacare made them essentially prohibited insurance uh -huh. companies from offering them. So we think it's going to take about six months for the insurance companies to actually offer what are called partial risk or catastrophic right. only policies. And then other people who are just going bare without insurance are really on their own, right? They have some, they have options, but, uh, but they're basically looking for solutions other than health insurance. But to Sam's point, the, the whole point of this sort of exchange issue was put everybody in it, make everyone pay. That, in theory, would lower the rates because then you have healthy population, people who are less healthy, you have them all together, and that somehow brings the rate down. So this is really changing potentially the dynamic of all of it. Yeah, this, no, this, so that was the theory behind Obamacare, right? Yeah, yeah we were going to put together the sicker people who didn't have insurance along with these healthier people and essentially make younger, healthier people bring down rates by, by creating a, a lower cost risk pool. Uh, because most of us don't need a lot of health care until we hit our, our late 50s, mid, mid late 50s. Yeah. And then it's just up, up, up. So the problem is the, the whole system hasn't, has never really fully worked. And we've been dependent on federal subsidies. Right. Um, it, so it's gonna, this is definitely, uh, uh, this is likely to make it worse in terms of making, making the risk pool sicker and therefore more expensive. And do you know what's coming down the pike that we haven't heard of in terms of what's being considered, what could potentially replace this if, if in fact goes away as the way we know it. 
So, uh, so the short-term issue for everyone who's watching, everyone who's affected by this, is whether Congress is going to reinstate uh, the cost-saving subsidies, which are called the CSRs, cost-saving reductions. Those were payments that the federal government has until now been making to the health insurance companies to cover, to keep the cost down on the insurance exchanges. So what happened, according to the reports coming out of Washington, was that though some of the Republican senators who voted against the repeal of the individual mandate in the spring and summer, their minds were changed by a promise that later in January we were going to see a, uh, a reinstatement attached to a spending bill. So that's the big short-term issue. Mm. The longer-term issue, as we get past, uh, get closer to the November midterms, is whether we're going to see uh, Democrats putting forth a more, you know, a replacement or a different vision towards single payer. Um, so that a lot of that is still far away and hard to tell. Yeah. Right. And all of this really uh, also because so many people under Obamacare, we heard story after story, their premiums went up so much. I mean, my parents being one of them had no insurance because they could no longer pay their premium. Yeah. So it, will this change that for those folks who were having trouble paying those premiums? I think, I think yeah, I think it's going to be uh, rising premiums are probably ahead. We saw the average plan on covered California went up 12 and a half percent this past year, which mm. was a uh, was expensive. Yeah. Uh, employer insurance was going getting up, going up. And it's a it's a safe bet that we're going to see higher rates ahead. All right. Once again, book is titled From Obamacare to Trump Care, Harry Nelson, partner at Nelson Hardiman, a law firm for health care providers. For more information, you could check out the website, TrumpHealthCareBook.com. Thank you, Harry, for being Thanks here. Thanks for having me. Good